You're probably thinking, ugh, not more things to do, but trust me on this one. You know when you like fix one thing and suddenly the rest of your life becomes so much easier and you wonder why you didn't do that one thing sooner? Yeah, that's this list right here. These are some quick, simple things that are going to make the next few weeks run so much smoother and not just the next few weeks, but into the new year too. Let's go. Hi guys, it's Laura and I help you live a simpler, happier, more spacious life so I wouldn't be giving you things to do just for the sake of it. These are to help make your life better. First thing on this list is to do a top-up shop. We all have those things that we run out of on a regular basis. So go around your home now and look at your toiletries, your paper products, the food that you have in the fridge. Even have a rummage through your medicine cabinet, figure out what are the things that you are going to need over the holiday season, because let's face it, you're not going to want to run to the shops and if you have guests over, you definitely don't want to be running out of things. Grab a piece of pen and paper, like I said, walk through your home and make a list of all of the things that you notice that you're running low on. Things like cleaning supplies, batteries, you know, think back over all of those situations where you've run out of something and it's been very frustrating or all of the things that you regularly seem to be running back to the shops to get. And if you want to take this to the next level, really set yourself up for success in the next year, then put those things on some sort of subscription service. Have it so all of those things are delivered to your home on a regular basis without you even having to think about it. So I do this for things like toilet paper, trash bags, dishwasher tablets, all those types of things. I never have to think about them. I never run out of them. They're there when I need them. You will not want to be doing a last minute scramble to the shops right before they shut. Nobody needs that stress in their lives. Gosh, it's so dark today. Winter is officially here, but the next one on this list is very similar. One of those things that will only take a few minutes, but it's just going to save you so much hassle. And that is going around now and doing all of those little tiny DIY jobs. I'm talking about the squeaky hinge. I'm talking about the cupboard door that's like a little bit loose, the drawer that's always getting stuck. Anything that's been really bugging you and annoying you every time you come into contact with that, just take five minutes now and knock out as many of those as you can. Let's face it, the next few weeks can be very frustrating and overwhelming and you'll have a lot on your plate. So the last thing you'll want to run into is all of those little minor annoyances because they will quickly pile up into a big frustration. This next one is going to be different for each individual person so this one will be completely subjective but make one, just one tiny positive change in December. So each year I talk about dry run December which is essentially taking your resolutions or your goals for the next year and putting them through a kind of a trial period. Starting small, testing them out, seeing how you go, making any tweaks or changes necessary so that when January 1st rolls around, you can hit the ground running. But December is for ironing out all of those little kinks. So if there is something that you have been thinking about doing, if there's a habit that you've been thinking about taking on, use December as your trial month. Test it out, just make one teeny tiny change, one small step in the direction that you would like to go. It could be drinking a glass of water first thing in the morning. It could be adding an extra serving of vegetables to your dinner. It could even be, you know, writing down one thing that you're grateful for each day in December. It is a teeny tiny change that over time is going to snowball and make a massive positive impact on your life. I would love to hear what your one positive thing is. Like what is the one small change that you are going to make that is going to get you closer to the life that you envision for yourself? My one change is that instead of scrolling on my phone in the mornings, I have started listening to music. A much better, more positive, upbeat way to wake up. And I find that that good, upbeat mood will continue with me throughout the day because I will like flick through all the songs until I get to one that really motivates me, like that I really want to hear that morning and then it will be stuck in my head and I will kind of bop to it <laughs> throughout the day. A really fun way to wake up rather than just scrolling through a social feed to see what everyone else is up to. 
oh, twinged something in my back. Oh, I'm getting old, folks. <laughs> the next one is something that I did just yesterday. In fact, I do it every weekend, and that is to call someone you love. Particularly if you're not going to see them over the holiday season, it's a great time to catch up with them, like see what's going on in their lives before things start to get really, really hectic. I am terrible at keeping in touch with people. Like I have people in my life that I love dearly, and if they messaged me and said, hey, I need you, I would be there even if I haven't seen them in literal years. But it's so easy for me in the day to day to just kind of forget to keep in contact with them. Like days roll into weeks, roll into months so quickly. Take this as your reminder if you need one to get back in touch with someone that you haven't spoken to for a while. Maybe you even fell out with someone and now you're ready to mend fences. Whatever it is for you, there goes the dog. The dog has decided that she no longer wants to talk to me. She's disappeared off. But whoever it is for you, just pick one person and reach out to them and try and form a stronger bond. Try and build better, stronger relationships in the new year. Just thinking there, it's also a great time to check in on any elderly neighbors or people you haven't seen in a while. But speaking of checking in, the next one is to book your checkups, check in on yourself. That could be, you know, a smear test. It could be an eye test. It could be a dental checkup. And you can just have them booked in. You don't necessarily have to attend all of them before the new year, but even just having them on your calendar, knowing that they're coming up. I already have a few booked in and I won't lie and say that I'm looking forward to all of them, but I do know that I am being proactive about my health and that is really, really important to me. I know that I'm getting closer and closer to better health each time I attend one of these things. But just to give you an example, even if it's not, you know, booking a checkup with a medical professional, another thing that you can do is to book a checkup with yourself, like do a breast exam or whatever sort of physical exam you need to do it yourself. Earlier this year, when I was administering a self exam, I found a lump in my breast and I was able to go straight to my doctor she sent me for a mammogram they sent me for an ultrasound because they did find something but thankfully it turned out to be just a cyst but the relief that it brought me not just that it didn't turn out to be anything serious but also just knowing myself that I knew that something was up with my body like I knew that something was wrong I have been doing breast exams like on a regular basis for many many years now and I always wondered would I actually know if there was any difference? Would I actually be able to tell if something was there? It was a huge relief to me. I was actually very proud of myself that I was able to tell that something was wrong. You know, I went to my doctor, she did an exam and she said that she couldn't feel anything out of the ordinary, but Again, I was able to be proactive and say, you know what, this is not normal for me. So like I said, she referred me for a mammogram where they did turn up this cyst, but it was very reassuring to me to know that I could um, check myself, that I could notice if there was something wrong with me and that I could then advocate for myself. But yeah, my story is a little bit more involved because I'm dealing with some health issues. For you, it might just be a matter of calling up your doctor, booking in for a physical, getting the all clear. It might be going, just getting your eyes checked or whatever. Very straightforward for most people, but best to get it done. But then not only do you need regular checkups, you also have other things in your life that need regular maintenance. So it could be a boiler that needs servicing. Maybe your car needs to go into the shop to get the once over. Listen, I know you're thinking, oh, I don't really have time for that. You know, that's not really a priority right now, but you know how it is. Time like passes in the blink of an eye and before you know it, a year, two years have gone by and you can't remember when was the last time you had the HVAC system looked at and you only realize that when it breaks. Our air conditioner broke one year one summer and it was incredibly hot. It was like, I can handle the heat. I have a very high tolerance for heat. My husband cannot. He was like threatening to move out, <laughs> move in with someone else just to get the benefit of their air conditioner temporarily until ours could be fixed because it was going to take a few days. Now, thankfully in the end, I did find someone who could come the next morning, but since then, we have made sure that it is serviced on a regular basis. Take care of your things and your things will take care of you. Now, speaking of things taking care of you, this next one is really important. And if your cooking is anything like mine, this is something you definitely want to be doing before the holiday season kicks in. And that is changing all of the batteries 
in your smoke alarms. That's the kind of cook I am, you know, when I'm cooking, if the smoke alarm is going off. Again, it's one of those things that just regular maintenance, you know, changing the batteries every six months and you can set a reminder, put a notice in your calendar or whatever. But yeah, one of those things that you do not want to wait until it is too late to realize that you should have been doing this all along. Keep yourself safe over the holiday season. And like I said, set that reminder for six months from now so that you will remember to do it again. This next one is something that I will definitely be doing and honestly I cannot believe that I have not been doing it up until this point. Checking all of your safety hazard emergency equipment and not just that but also all of your emergency plans. Let me give you some examples like is your first aid kit topped up? Have you changed all of the batteries? Have you tested your fire extinguisher? Like, is it still full? Is it still within date? Do you have fire extinguishers, fire blankets, etc.? And if you do, are they in areas where you would actually need them? Are they easily accessible? Same with all of your exits. Are they free from obstruction so that if you did have to leave the house very quickly in an emergency, is it quick and safe to do so? Our alarm system was accidentally tested a few months ago. My husband left the house and accidentally set the alarm we have just like a button that you press it's on a little key fob but myself and our daughter were still in the house so uh, the motion sensors captured our movement the alarm went off I turned off the alarm but the alarm company called and they asked for the password you know because I said you know we're home it's all just an accident a misunderstanding um, but she asked for the password, obviously, to confirm that I was who I said I was. Did I know the password? No. I mean, like, I knew it when we had said it, but because we hadn't needed it in quite a while, I could not remember it for the life of me. So that's another thing. Like, do you have a monitored alarm system? Do you have a password? Do you know what that password is? Do you know the alarm codes to shut things off? Do you know how to turn off the water? Like if there is a huge leak, all of those things like you just don't think of them. But anyway, yes, the lady was like, okay. And she hung up and she couldn't get through to my husband because he was at work. So the next thing I knew, the cops showed up at the door. I mean, it was great in the sense that obviously the service worked and had there been an actual emergency or had someone been breaking into our house or whatever, then the cops would have been there. Very reassuring, but yeah, also mortifying at the time. But here's another one that I didn't even consider until recently because my daughter's school sent home a flyer saying that they were going to be offering classes in the next two months on home safety for kids. And I thought this was such an excellent idea, but it also made me realize that my daughter would be completely clueless because we have not taught her anything. But let me just give you some examples of the types of things that they're teaching in this class. So they're teaching about reasons to call 911. They're teaching kids what to do if they have forgotten their house key, if they can't get into the house. They're teaching kids what to do if they're choking. So how to administer the Heimlich maneuver to themselves. They do basic first aid, they're doing um, fire escape, like what to do in the event of a fire or some severe weather event. Like those are things that I had never even considered teaching my daughter. But now it seems very obvious that of course we should have some sort of fire escape plan or you know what we should do in case of emergency. Do you have all of those plans in place? Do you have all of your emergency equipment and procedures ready to go? Hopefully you will never need them but if you do it's better to have all of that sorted right now. Dog is back but one of the things I mentioned was making sure that your exits are free from obstruction and making sure that safety equipment that you have the emergency equipment that you have is easily accessible to you and one of the ways that you can do that is to declutter and it's not just great in case of like emergency which like i said hopefully you will never need but also just to give yourself some breathing space around your home particularly this time of year when generally there is going to be a big influx of new things coming in decluttering is one of those great things because once you get rid of it once like that's it you know a lot of these other things on the list that i'm talking about require some form of maintenance you know they do need to be done on a regular basis and yes decluttering itself does need to be done on a regular basis well it does in my house anyway but once you get rid of something 
that thing is gone out of your life. It's a great feeling, particularly if you get to free up a drawer or a shelf or something, it's very satisfying. That's a great way to start the new year, you know, going into the new year, not being weighed down by clutter. And I'm not just talking about physical clutter either, but think about digital clutter, like all of the email newsletters that you're getting, all of the subscription services that you're signed up for that you don't really want anymore. All of the things that you see in your social feed, you know, all of the people that you're following, all of the accounts that you're following that you really have no interest in or maybe they're even making you feel bad because they're all portraying this life that you're just not leading because we all just like share the best side of ourselves on social media it's not always a very accurate reflection of reality for most of us sometimes doing a little digital declutter unfollowing people or muting people that can have a huge impact but there are other things as well that you can declutter like your schedule do you have appointments in there events commitments that really are just taking up space that you don't really need to be attending or putting your time and energy and effort Effort and maybe even money into. When it comes to decluttering, there are so many different aspects of it. It's not just about going through your junk drawer and throwing out a few things. But I know all of this stuff has built up over years and because there are so many different facets to it, there's the physical stuff, there's the digital element, there's the scheduling stuff. You might be wondering, where do I even start? Like this is far too overwhelming. It's going to take me days, weeks, maybe even months to go through that stuff. That is why I have a 30 day decluttering challenge. It takes you step by step through exactly what to do and it will only take five minutes a day. And because it's 30 days, if you start it today, you will be done when the new year rolls around and you could start it with a clean, fresh slate. Until next time, go rev me la magwev. Agus fekimei shibshikalua. Slán.